So as some of you guys know, I've covered a lot of the Tremaine Emery ups and downs, the founder of Denim Tears, who was formerly at Supreme as creative director. He had a bit of a breakthrough, I feel like an awakening when I was listening or watching an interview that he did with, um, I think, The Business of Hype with Angelo Back, the founder of Awake. And it seemed like he was awake. It seemed like he had finally, you know, realized the error of his ways. And he came to the conclusion that maybe both parties, him and Supreme, were to blame for how it ended over there for him. Then shortly after, he dropped that systemic racism capsule thing. A bit corny, a bit lame, but I get it. But now it seems like he's going full steam ahead with hating on Supreme again and reminding us that he got fired. He just can't let it go, it seems like. So this is a post courtesy of Urban Under that details a, a post that um, Tremaine did on his Twitter in relation to the Supreme 30th anniversary party, which they had recently in Webster Hall. Big up Webster Hall. I remember going there a few years ago, back in the days, actually. Absolutely amazing, legendary um, New York venue, if you know, you know. Supreme did their special anniversary um, party there. They had Little Yatty and Cash Cobain performing. And this is not the picture that Tremaine added on his Twitter. They added this after the fact. But the actual post is the post. So Tremaine said on his Twitter, white men in the office, black people on stage performing. It's called black entertainment. And then, of course, over and under, whoever put that picture after the fact. So it's him basically subtweeting Supreme's party and essentially saying, oh, essentially reminding us of what he reminded us in the interview when he said that he was shocked and appalled when he went to Supreme and he found out that everybody in the head office was majority white. But then in the stores, in their editorials, in their lookbooks, they always presented this kind of, you know, United Colors or Benetton skateboard brand that was worldwide and multicultural and blah, blah, blah. Diversity was like in their name. And it was a real big bug. It was a real kind of beanie's bonnet over that sort of thing. And personally, it's just sad to see. I'm not going to lie. As much as I would like to dunk on a guy and like laugh at him, I think it's just sad to see it because clearly this guy is still tore up about how this ended. And you can kind of understand why. Um, allegedly, according to him, actually, he was getting paid like, what, half a million dollars to be a creative director of Supreme. If you think about it, given his experience, given his name, given his notoriety his clout levels it should have been an easy job it should have been an easy job to collect your check to get a bit of extra clout points um and to maybe learn some things that you could then carry into your own brand really and truly and i think as a design challenge it's an interesting one to approach like you have a very specific voice and a lane and the sort of thing that you do with denim tears and then you're asked to kind of take some of that and sprinkle it in on supreme that should be an interesting challenge to try and see what you can get away with underneath that kind of supreme banner especially with them being bought by vf corp so you've got all of these you know things that you kind of need to kind of maneuver around and really i feel like if you're a real designer designer if you're a real creative right that's part of the appeal that was part of the the flipping thing that would get you excited for a job like that because you're doing your own thing underground you get this big paycheck from this big company and then it kind of feeds all the shit you're doing. So essentially what it would, what it should do is take the pressure off Denim Tears so you can maybe do some more fun, interesting things. Um, it'll be very hard because I think as a, you know, a lot of designers out there have proved them the most recently being a good example. It's very difficult to kind of split your creativity or your design powers across two brands, especially two with very different voices, two different customers. It's very, very difficult to do at a high level. So something will have to give eventually. But for a short period of time, run it up. Collect that bag, feed that money into your brand, take the pressure off, then in tears a bit. And then who knows, even the cash itself could give you extra runway for another 12, 18 months. You know how fickle fashion is. Things can change at a dime. So it will be a good thing. So maybe deep down, he is really pissed off at himself for literally fumbling the bag. Or maybe it really did hurt him the realization of going somewhere and figuring out oh shit this place of my dreams this place that i absolutely always wanted to work at because you know me growing up being a supreme fanboy there was a time where i always wanted to work at the store there was a time where i always wanted to be a you know working in the head office and be being a part of the team or whatever same with the whole nike thing right but then sometimes you go to these companies and you actually work for them and you realize oh shit this isn't the place that i dreamed about this is actually a fucking nightmare which is why sometimes and i've kind of learned this the hard way it's really important to just be a fan and be okay being a fan because sometimes when you know too much when you get to, when, when you start seeing how the sausage is made as brendan Schwab would say it will really kind of sour um the love that you have for the brand and sometimes it will ultimately make you very cynical 
and you don't want that especially if you want to be creative you have to be a little bit optimistic you have to be a bit of a dreamer you have to have your head in the clouds a little bit so being that cynical grumpy you know sod isn't really the best for creativity but all in all all in all all in all it's just sad to see I'm not going to lie because there was a moment where I thought Tremaine had finally let go. He'd finally moved on, but it seemed like he just cannot let go. How it ended at Supreme, which makes me think that there must have been some things that happened there behind the scenes that he hasn't really spoken about that really cut deep. Maybe one of the things I was thinking about that might have been something that kind of annoyed him was the fact that he was hired as a creative director. But then when he got there, he really wasn't a creative director because James Jebby is still in charge. And then on top of that, I think he mentioned one lady called Erin McGee, who was like the first, I remember her from back in the day because she was like one of the first like women that had a streetwear brand, like a prominent one. It was called like Made Me and she was always associated with Supreme Store. And I didn't know that she still worked there. She's been there for like 26 years or something. This lady, she's like got really short cropped hair and shit, blonde. And she had this brand called Made Me that kind of did like, I don't know, like athleisure, athleisure kind of bike wear short things whatever i forgot what it was it, it, it wasn't you know it wasn't the biggest brand but i remember her being a little bit of a staple back in the day in new york and shit and allegedly she was pissed off when tremaine got the job which you can imagine why right imagine working at a company for 20 plus years and you're doing design and whatnot and then this black guy comes in who's got a brand where he puts fucking you know cotton reefs all over the hoodies and shit you must be sitting there thinking hold on you hide an external person it, it it's going to be annoying if you hire an external person but imagine you hire an external person and they're Denim Tears or they're Tremaine Emery. That's going to piss you off. If it's like a high level designer who's like, you know, super creative, super forward thinking, pushing the envelope. Maybe you might be like, okay, cool, I contest. But maybe in Erin McGee says, she's like, I'm better than this guy. So you hire him, he comes in. And then as soon as he comes in, he turns that shit into fucking, you know, he's out here protesting and shit. He's straight on the fucking race car thing. He's calling you out, calling this out. You're like, fucking hell. So they obviously butt heads and maybe them butting heads or some other stuff is just really, it, he hasn't been able to let that shit go. It's kind of eating away at him, which you can understand why. Because again, you know, think about the micromanaging side of things, you know, as much as I love James Jebbia, he doesn't seem like the type of person who's going to relinquish control. He's very, I'd imagine he's probably a little bit of a, you know, um, micromanager. I assume he's very hands-on, doesn't know how to kind of delegate probably, which again is a good thing because that's why Supreme's around 30 plus years. You don't you don't survive 30 years in streetwear with you know being bought out by a company or you know having investment from a large company and shit you know by being hands off by going and sunning yourself or whatever you you survive 30 years because the founder of the company is still very much involved so you get sold on the dream you get this job you think you're the next virgil that might also be the thing as well you think you've got the baton you think you're going to be that guy you finally get that role you go there they sell you they sell you a bit of a dream you you end up because that's happened to us before i'm sure some of us have happened you know you've had a you went to a job interview you thought it was one thing then when you start it's completely another thing so that's also can kind of hurt but i think in this case if what he says is true about denim tears if they're doing millions of dollars per year every time they drop a, dead, a cotton reef shirt he's got um a cotton reef collection sorry they've just opened a new retail store all these collaborations if this is all true why are you bothered that's where i'm thinking hmm is it all a ruse is denim tears actually not doing as good as he says it is because if you're actually doing well if your if your brand is actually popping if people really give a shit about what you do if you're really doing numbers if your shopify is going off why would you give a fuck about supreme's 30th anniversary part especially why would you give a fuck because they've got yatty and fucking cash uh, cash cobain like these these are kids that are current they you know i think I think yeah, he might be the oldest. I think he's at like twenty six or something. Of course, they're gonna have them there. Yeah, he was modeling for them. Cash Cobain is like from New York. Like he's got the whole, he's got the fucking city in the ball in the palm of his hands right now. You could probably, you know, I'd bet the the story in New York they probably blast Yeah and fucking Cash Cobain songs on the fucking sound system all bloody day. You can understand why they would play it. The kids probably like that sort of stuff. So I don't really think because they, you know, got Cash Cobain and Lil Yachty to perform at the 30th anniversary party that it means that they are some sort of, I don't know what, what he thinks they are, but I find it absolutely insane, legitimately insane. And I'm also not really sold on this idea that, you know, it's a bad thing that just because the head office is majorly white, I don't actually buy that either. I don't I don't think so especially a brand like Supreme they've done so much for people that aren't white especially when you think about the people that have left that company or who, who have represented them in some way shape or form and have gone to do big and great things I think they're allowed to have a bit of a whitewashed head office I think they're allowed 
you know they have a store where they hire literally every other race under the sun except for white for the most part especially the store here in london you know what i mean it's like it's like going through the ends sometimes going in there you can barely hear yourself because the music is so loud in there but yeah like i think they're allowed to have a whitewash office i'm not gonna lie i think they're allowed to have it and i don't think it kind of you know looks bad on them for doing so in my personal opinion but i would just love the guy to just move on really would like him to move on really would like him to just be like okay cool it didn't go well you know what can i do it is what it is just move on because this is getting a bit embarrassing and i'm glad i'm not the only one that thinks that because if you look through the stay grounded tv account big up stay grounded um they do great stuff as well on social media if you want all that streetwear news people in the comments are saying the same things some guy says yeah i feel where he's coming from but he's married to a white woman the white woman thing i don't even think is important i don't think that's an important thing that's a little bit you know i don't think that really matters too much it's just the fact that you just can't let go. That's the issue for me. It's like he needs to move on. You could be married to whoever. You could, you're too allowed to complain. Just because you're married to a white person doesn't mean you can't ever complain about white shit. That's kind of weird. Um, another person said here, um, Emery is the corniest person in fashion for a good minute now. See, like this whole stuff is ruining his reputation as well. He's making, I'm sure he doesn't care, but online-wise, he's starting to look incredibly, incredibly corny. Unfortunately so. And he's not. You know, I've met him only, what, a couple of times. He's a fairly cool dude. Seems quite intelligent. Seems to have his head screwed on correctly. So I'm not really sure why Guan. I'm not sure what happened to him or why he's like this now. But all of this crying and complaining isn't the Tremaine that I once knew. It continues. Black women on Instagram, white women in the bedroom. <laughs> it's called white entertainment. Another says, once again, he's not the one to be spreading this message. Stop giving this corny guy a platform. Then in tears won't matter anymore next year. I'm actually curious to see what does Denim Tears do actually next? That cotton reef thing is going off. Everybody wears it. I feel like whenever I've been to the airport, I'm not going to lie, I feel like I've seen so many people wear the cotton reef. And again, it could, whether it's real or fake, it doesn't matter. The fact that they're wearing your brand is the main thing because it means like it's fucking popular. I think I've seen such an increase in people going to the airport wearing that Denim Tears cotton reef sweatsuit. Because I feel like in the past, I saw a lot more like Yeezy, Pantone type things going there when you went to the when you went to the airport. Now I'm seeing a lot of people dressing up in that cotton reef hoodie thing. And I'm like, wow, bro, this is becoming like the airport thing to wear now. Because it's a bit luxe, it's a bit streetwearish, it's a bit comfy, you know, kind of got all of them mixed into one. But it's also a little bit of a one trick pony thing. Like, what do you do next with that? Or can it last like, you know, like other monograms? And just be something that they do again and again and again. Will it kind of like get become corny the same way the Avisu sign became corny at one point? I wonder. I'm really curious because, you know, he seems, you know, he must know, especially on their end, that no one really cares about their quote unquote ready to wear outside of the cut outside of the cotton reef stuff, you'd imagine. Um, no one really cares about that sort of stuff. All they care mo mostly about is that cotton reef design. So I wonder what is next. Do you try to usurp that do you try to create a new pattern do you just keep making more ready to wear and hope that that pops off and people care about your main line curious another says bro is corny i don't get what i did not what did i miss still wear preem before dt and i barely fuck with supreme i see he's salty about getting fired another person here says cram me some denim tears you're the amy schumer of fashion does cotton reef print got your head, bro? Let other people shine without trying to make it about you. They're calling him the Amy Schumer of fashion. I don't agree with this. I think this is a bit too harsh. But this is what happens when you complain and cry all the time on social media. People start saying the most wildest shit about you and it sometimes it'll stick. The Amy Schumer of fashion. Yikes. Another one says, bro, hate white people, but he couldn't leave our women alone to the point of marrying one. LMAO, no one believes this narrative anymore. Another person says, homie was trying to put black trauma on a $44 t-shirt for a majority white, politically ignorant consumer base. He can high road performers um, the moment he gets his own house in order. Oh, okay. Okay. So clearly, I'm not the only one that thinks Tremaine needs to move on and let it go. But will he? I don't think so. I think a Supreme has now become a part of his identity. The fact that he got fired is a is the you know part of his story now. He won't ever let it go because I guess the trauma is just too much to process. The trauma is just too much to process.